Hi, I'm Mark Fulton with Sysdig Customer Success. Today we'll learn about creating dashboards in Sysdig Monitor. Let's take a closer look at dashboard customization in Sysdig Monitor. This is going to be where we can create a dashboard from scratch. So, when we're in the Sysdig Monitor UI, um, click on Dashboards on the left, and then it'll bring you into this dashboard screen. You can see that dashboards are split into three sections. You have dashboards that the uh, user has created, so your own dashboards. You have dashboards that you are sharing um, with other team members. And then you also have dashboards that other team members are sharing with you. We'll explore the sharing concepts in another video, but for now let's take a look at how to create a new dashboard from scratch. In the top right you'll see an Add Dashboard menu. So this is going to look at all of the integrations that are enabled in your environment, both um, orchestration, or orchestrators, um, apps, and any custom app checks, and then define a list of out-of-the-box, ready-to-use dashboards in accordance to what has been auto-detected. So you can see that we're using AWS and we're using uh, these applications in our environment as well as um, Kubernetes. Yeah. So just like the groupings, we're going to uh, only show dashboards that are relevant for the infrastructure seen in our environment. You'll see top dashboards listed here, so these are some of the most popular or common ones and might be considered maybe some of sort of the basic things that you might want to monitor. Um, so a very good starting point. You also have an option to just create a blank slate, a blank dashboard, and then uh, build your own panels on the dashboard yourself. Our recommendation for new Sysdig users is to definitely start with one of the dashboards that's out of the box to see if that will meet your monitoring needs or monitoring use cases. And then really just kind of tweak things from there. Um, so to do that, using the search tool is, uh, is definitely a good method. So you can search, for example, by the orchestrator name, so Kubernetes or Docker Swarm, and you'll see Kubernetes related dashboards. You can search by an application and you'll be able to find the, the individual application listed out there. So, um, or if you just want overview dashboards, then that's also a good term to use to find those. Let's pick uh, the container limits dashboard here. Now, naming the dashboard, um, usually it can make sense to name the dashboard in accordance to what it is going to scope in your environment. So if you want the dashboard to monitor all infrastructure, then you could call it all infrastructure. If you just wanted to um, scope it to a specific service or namespace, then you can also um, use that as a naming convention. Just to sort of kind of separate the dashboard or make it easily identifiable in this flat list is the idea there. So now that we've created our dashboard, you can see that by default, it's going to pre-populate um, the panels for it. And you'll also see that in the top left, the dashboard is scoped. Now by default, we're going to scope to everywhere in the infrastructure. So a good first step might be for us to uh, go ahead and edit that scope to uh, the entity or entities that we want to monitor. So um, let's do a search here and let's see if we can find um, some namespaces that we want to monitor. And again, the great thing about Sysdig is it's only going to show you relevant results um, based on entities that have been picked up or detected in the environment. So all of these namespaces um, will exist. Uh, we're not going to display anything sort of that, that might be unexpected here in the menu. Um, we do allow multiple selections. So you can see here I've been able to select two, um, two different Kubernetes namespaces. We could also go a step further and then pick something else. Um, like if we wanted to limit it maybe by AWS region US East 1B, we could also do that. So definitely lots of different options here to customize the scoping of the dashboard. We're going to hit save here and you can see that updates what we call the, the default scope of the dashboard. That means that by default all of these panels are going to inherit this scoping. 
A next step might be for us to look at different options as far as the layout goes. So you can see that the default size of those panels was sort of about a half width of this section. Um, but it may be something that in this case we want to widen a little bit just to get a, be able to see the data um, a little bit better. As before as well, note that um, the time scale at the bottom is applying here. So we're now seeing the last hour of data in this instance. And note also that you will see this UI overlay here when you make any changes to the dashboard. So it will not auto save those. This is by design in case you make a mistake. It's easy to go ahead and revert those. Another way, um, you can also manually move these panels around the dashboard. So we could, for example, um, we could dr just simply drag and drop these to reorder them. And again, if we make a mistake, we can revert. We can also manually just resize, make them as small or large as we want, and the UI is going to auto scale um, the axes on those accordingly. Thanks for watching this short overview video on creating dashboards. Next time, we'll look at customizing panels.